what are things, and I know you're a fan, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, of Matt Walker and a lot of his thinking on sleep, and I shouldn't say thinking, I mean his, his research related to sleep. How have you changed, or better yet, improved sleep protocol, things that uh, you prescribe, not necessarily chemicals, to patients to improve sleep quality? I mean, this sleep is a hard thing because it's sort of like exercise in the sense that you can't just give somebody a pill that makes sleep better. Um, it really comes down to changing. It, it's you, you have to sort of accept you're going to make behavior change. You have to prioritize this thing. And it's not just the eight hours you want to spend in bed. It's the buildup to it. So my sort of simplest toolkit which is what I basically employ. I mean, most nights I don't require a supplement to sleep. It's not like I'm taking, you know, melatonin or even using Kirk Parsley supplement. I mean, those things are, I'm basically reserving for jet lag situations and things like that. But if I'm, if I'm doing everything correctly or fasting, you know, that's another time when you need a little bit of a boost. But if I'm doing everything correctly, you know, using the right amount of blue light blocking glasses, and I've recently switched to a new brand that that I am freaking super jazzed about. It's, I mean, I find, first of all, they actually have published research that, you know, documents, uh, actually, I shouldn't, um, I don't know if it's been published yet, but anyway, they, they have data that I've actually seen that demonstrate, you know, how much they're able to block blue light. And at least according to my, my, um, sort of sleep tracking metrics, they're, they're definitely contributing to much more deep sleep than I've seen historically. Can you name? Yes, yes. It's called Felix Gray. F-E-L-I-X? It, yes. Uh, Felix and then Gray. Uh, actually, you can see the box, right, sitting over there. So those glasses sitting right over there are my Felix Grays. And they're, they're just redonkulous. G-R, well, people can find it. A-Y yeah. or E-Y. One yeah, or yeah, two. yeah. I think it's A-Y. Um, and, um, so, so, you know, I'm very religious about using those things. Felix Gray, is that a real person or is it like I, I, Ashley Madison? I have, I have no <laughs> idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, may, it might be in the latter. Yeah. So, um, so I use those things religiously. I'm very attentive to how much light is around me as the sun is going down. I'm also very attentive of not doing stupid things in the evening. And we've talked a lot about this, not looking at email, not looking at social media, not, looking at things that are going to potentially activate or phosphorylate me in any way. <laughs> it's another Peter. Peterism, don't fucking phosphorylate me. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, just being very consistent in bedtime and wake-up time. You yeah. know, and, and, and when, when I'm really in the zone, it's, it's early to bed, early to rise. So understanding your own chronotype, are you an early or late chronotype? Well, you and I have talked about this a lot. Um, incredible darkness in the actual room at night or using, I, I use this thing called the Alaska bear eye shade. It's like, you can buy it on Amazon. It's eight bucks. It's like this little silky Alaska bear. <laughs> mask. It's the stupidest name ever. I don't know why. I love it though. I have, I have 20 Alaska bears because I have them everywhere. So there, I'm never without one. Um, and um, I use I, I just upgraded in the last six months from the chili pad to the Uller. That's O O L E R. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, our buddy Kevin uses that as well. Yeah, I have no affiliations with any of these companies, by the way. So I feel totally happy to just plug them shamelessly um, for no personal gain. Um, and the Uller is a big step in the right. It, it's it's really taken the chili pad to another level. First one's on me, Uller. <laughs> I do take sponsorship money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but this has come up with Kevin. Uh, that's a joke, people, in case you can't take it. <laughs> for fuck's sake. Uh, yeah, this has come up a couple times recently. Um, the other thing is el almost elimination of alcohol. So I'll probably have a drink tonight, right? Yeah. We're going out to dinner, like a bunch of friends getting yeah. together in Austin tonight. I mean, I'll have a drink tonight, probably. Um, um, yeah, you were the one who really put it on my... I, I certainly academically or intellectually understood that alcohol, even though it in some cases seems to make it easier to sleep, really disrupts quality of sleep or degrades quality of sleep. But yeah. I really didn't have an appreciation of that until, uh, and this is one where I guess I don't have any disclosure, but the where the aura ring really highlighted that for me, just how fucked my sleep was in terms of quality after, say, two and a half three drinks. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm down to probably three or four drinks a month. Yeah. 
uh, that's that's basically it. And 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 there, I've I've gone two months without a single drink. It's like it has to be worth it because even at one drink, I'm going to experience some degradation of sleep. And could could you what what type of degradation? It's generally a reduction in REM, uh, for sure. Uh, a slight reduction in deep and an increase in fragmentation. So you're in a you're just you're moved into that stage one, stage two. Uh, space a bit more. Do you see a uh, spike in, uh, for lack of a specificity, the middle of the night in resting heart rate after you drink two or three drinks? Well, I see a higher resting heart rate period, period. and a lower heart rate variability for sure, and a higher body temperature. Um, and I don't know the last time I had two drinks in a night, but but definitely it's one to two is also a really big step up. So, you know, look, it's everyone's got to decide what they're going to do and what their priorities are. And I'm not here to say don't drink at all, but I just have to, I just, I, do, I would just say like, don't be mindless in your drinking is sort of my point. Like if you're going to drink, like make it really freaking worthwhile. Yeah. Like do it for a reason. Don't just do it because the alcohol's there. Is it, uh, I don't know if you've seen anything anecdotally or experienced this personally but do you, is is it is it just the ethanol or is there is there variability across vehicles for you know the alcohol itself right is it is a sipping tequila going to do less damage than for sort of the the equivalent blood alcohol content achieved yeah. through red wine or something like that i don't know if you've if you've looked at any of this yourself I mean, anecdotally, uh, it's hard to know because, you know, your mind is also sort of feeding into a narrative around this stuff. But certainly drinking my Classe Azul Reposado seems to be less toxic or, you know, than having, well, I'll tell you, I mean, I've given up certain things. Like, I don't drink a Moscow Mule anymore. Like, I make a mean-ass Moscow Mule. I love that drink so much. I love the ginger beer, the lime, the whole ritual. But what I really decided was it's just not worth combining sugar and alcohol together. You know, the, you know, once in a while you can have sugar, once in a while you can have alcohol. Putting the two together is like, I mean, you might as well just kick yourself in the nuts at that point. <laughs> so I just don't want to do that. Um, so, so certainly mixed drinks are things that I think just don't have a place in civil society. Um, if, if you care about your liver, if you don't care about your liver, by all means, drink all the mixed drinks in the world. Um, certain, I, I don't experience this personally. I don't seem to have any issue with red wine. I don't get hangovers. I don't get headaches, even if I have a couple glasses of red wine. But I, I've certainly seen patients who see a real difference in red wine consumption, um, and it really seems to sit poorly with them. Um, similarly, if I drink like my sort of dark favorite super duper Belgian beer, I don't seem to get any bloating or anything from it, but I've seen people who who can't really handle that stuff either. Now that would, although it's not a mixed drink, I mean, you're getting plenty of maltose in that, right? So, yeah. I mean, you're getting a nice little... It's the fructose that I'm most worried about. It's the uh, fructose uh, and the ethanol combined I never want. I see. Because right. they both go through this similar metabolic pathway and right. when they're delivered in liquid form, that when the fructose is in a liquid form and the ethanol, which of course is in a liquid form, um, now you've combined the velocity problem the kinetic problem is working against